Here we are in Los Angeles. <laughs> Your boy Nick Swisher filling in for Rich Eisen on the Rich Eisen Show. Ladies and gentlemen, we are blessed and honored to have my boy Ben Lyons in Good the to building see you, today, bro. bro. Do you remember, here's a story. Do you remember the first time you met my wife? Was it at the wedding? It was at the wedding. That's it was right. at Jamie and Cutter's wedding. That's right. You remember and I was that? like, Mariah, you're going to meet this guy, Nick Swisher. He's awesome. Like, he just <laughs> rips. He crushes. She's like, all right. She's excited. She's excited. We get up there a little late. It's Friday night. So Swish has already gone up to the room, but he comes back down. He's at the bar, and he's wearing a T-shirt that says, don't bro me unless you know me. <laughs> And he sees me across the bar and he goes, you know me, bro, you know me. And I was like, look, Mariah, that's Nick. That's, that's the, the guy. guy. Right and as advertised, he oh. rips. So. Well, buddy, what an unbelievable one. And your wife, by far, she, uh, you married up. There's no she, doubt about that. She's always that. like, what is this coverage that everyone talks about you out kicking? What is that? What <laughs> is like, that coverage? Well, I'm like, yes, if trust me. If we could somehow get a trust few me. pictures, we'll I, do a side, I, I'll kick the side coverage, by side. Side by side, we'll know. Sure. I think all the good <laughs> Thanks, ones, we dude. all marry up. There's I, no doubt about on, that. Man. We try and do that. Uh, well, check out my boy Ben on Twitter and Instagram at I am Ben Lyons. A lot of Knicks talk these days. A lot of RJ uh, Barrett tweets. Well, more assists than Kobe White. More rebounds than DeAndre Hunter. He's Let's ready, go. Right? Yeah. I'll tell you what, man, just for the Knicks in general, right? I mean, obviously with the Kevin Durant injury, that changes a lot of things moving forward. Seven days before uh, NBA free agency starts. I mean, come on, hoops is right up your alley. Give me See, a little Nick, breakdown Nick, of what's going to happen. It's all about how you look at life. It's perspective. The most Knicks thing ever would be to sign Kevin Durant and then the ruptured Achilles. Oh, this, <laughs> this is progress. This is hope. Yeah, this, this is, is only right. So, look, y your heart goes out as, as a professional athlete, I'm sure. As fans, your heart goes out to Kevin Durant. You want what's best for him. I want him in New York so badly. I'll take the red shirt year. Yeah, of course. I want him to come to, to, to play for the Knicks. There's talks of him going to Brooklyn today. That's the rumor that's out this morning. I hope not. I, I, would, I would hate Rich Kleiman for the rest of my life. I've known him since we were, like, in high school. He went to Fieldston. I went to Collegiate, arch rivals. If Rich sends KD to the Brooklyn Nets, I would oh, be dead yeah, to me Yeah, they're the forever. betting favorite now. They are the betting favorite? Yeah, minus 125. Well, who else? Who said RJ too? Bell or someone? Vegas uh, say that? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, they say Kyrie's going there, too? Uh, that's been the long rumor. Kyrie and Durant in Brooklyn. With the red shirt year. Um, yeah, I mean, look, Barclays is a nightclub with the lights turned on. That place is the 100%. worst. Yeah. And the, what I don't like about the Nets move to Brooklyn is they pretend that all the years in New Jersey never existed. Even existed. Can we get a <laughs> Kenny Kittle sock night? Can we get a, right? Can we get a Stephon Marbury appreciation night? Can Keith we get Van a Horn? Guy? Oh, take it. Keith Van Horn? Yeah. Man. Carrie you know Kittles. I mean? Yeah. Can we get like some acknowledgement of the fact that they played basketball before they moved to Brooklyn? But Sean no, Bradley. it's just... You Who know. else? Who else on those old Nets Yeah, teams? I mean, Kerry, I said, Kerry Kittles, Vince Carter, oh, geez, um, Jason Williams. Back, right? I mean, you know, that, those teams were awesome. They went to the finals, Jay Kidd. Derek Coleman. Man, I used to love going out because you're so cheap to go out. The Knicks, the Knicks were so good in the 90s that every stockbroker had season tickets, <laughs> so real fans had to go out and see the Nets play. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. I mean, that was cheaper hands. back then, bro. See I Chris Morris sneaking nights. in the stadiums oh, wow. to watch games and stuff back in the day. You were able to get away with that stuff back in the day. Not anymore. Not anymore. So what else is new, man? Everything's good? Man, I'm, I'm excited, dude, because in addition to a lot of this hosting stuff, doing a lot of producing of stuff, you were really supportive of a film we released this year, In Search of Greatness. By the way, um, Man, this directed is, by Gabe Polsky. Let me break it down real fast. If you haven't seen this documentary, you need to, right? We've got three main guys in on it. We've got Pele, we've got Jerry Rice, and we've got Wayne Gretzky. Arguably three of the greatest that they've that, that have played their We had you slotted sport. in there, yeah, right but now. the director way, made a choice way down here, bro. Way down to go here. with those three instead. But it's the idea of unlocking human potential, right? And why did Wayne Gretzky, Jerry Rice, and Pele become these icons in their sport when they're by no means the biggest, fastest, strongest? Of course. But it's because they just had a love of the game and they were able to have that love grow when they were children growing up and they weren't over coached and over AAU'd and over specialized. They played other sports. They trained other muscle groups. They had other interests besides the sports. So that was a film we put out um, at the end of 2018. It's available now on iTunes and stuff. But the idea of bringing um, the culture conversation, sports together, athletes as artists, that's sort of what I'm about and, and, and I'm trying to do as a storyteller. So we have a few projects coming up uh, being released in 2019 and through the rest of the year. And I just love where you can bring sports and culture together. I did it with my Rock the Vote campaign. Yeah, back in the day, that's you right. You know what I mean? Yes. Just getting the Golden State Warriors and the WNBA behind voting and, and getting their, you know, their voice out there. So anytime you can, you know, yeah, it's the X's and O's of the game and we can yell at, you know, players on the other team and heckle. And, you know, I like to sit 
in the bleachers. And when you're in Yankee Stadium, you're my friend. But I'm throwing quarters. I'm not yeah. throwing batteries. I'm not throwing batteries. But one of two. I'm, you, know, I'm, I'm, you know, that's part of the game. But there's a larger game of life. And whether it's through film or some of these other projects that we're working on, um, I like to try to play in that sandbox yeah. as well. Uh, once again, yeah, your boy Nick Swisher sitting in here for Rich Eisen on the Rich Eisen Show. Talking to my main man, the one and only Ben Lyons. Uh, talking a little bit about the doc that they just released a little bit ago, In Search of Greatness. And one of the things I took from that doc, the thing I really, really appreciated the most, was from Jerry Rice. And it, it, and it may be like the most simple saying, but you don't have to be the best athlete on the field to be the best athlete on the field, right? I think you took passion, right? Pele, talking about not boxing kids in. And I think for myself, being a coach moving forward, right? I think that's what we do a lot. We like physically show people how to do things. And I don't think that's how it should be done nowadays. What do you say to a young baseball player out there who says, Coach, Swish, show me a batting stance. Show me some of the all-time great hitters. Right. And you show them Carl Yastrzemski's going to bring it high. Yeah. You're going to show them Julio Franco pointing the, the other way. Yeah, yeah. You're going to show them with the, like one foot open. A little Sadahara O with right. a big so leg kick. It's all about feel and it's all about that. kind of Again, like I said at the top, people doing exactly what they should be. When you man. see it and it's natural. When you see R.J. Barrett and he's wearing the pink suit and he's got the diamonds, you're like, you <laughs> look like good. new money. You look like a winner, dude. <laughs> yeah. um, no, but the the, uh, the idea of kids finding their way as a parent, I can imagine, especially when it comes to this youth sports stuff, has got to be com- – completely overwhelming or intimidating even as a former athlete yourself but to give kids the 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 freedom to fail the idea that you don't have to be in the backyard doing uh, crossover drills like go play go right. go play soccer go work on other things go do yoga like go have fun go be a kid just go uh, be yourself yeah and then you'll find your way as you get older and if you have that great gift of of greatness that exists within those guys then hopefully that'll be able to come out well obviously it'll shine out through i think we try and force that issue very early in life. And if you don't make the traveling team at six, yeah, you're, then you're right. not going to make it at seven and by eight, you're over the hill. <laughs> it's like really, really That's ridiculous. out of control. Anyways, man, let, let's talk a little more NBA, right? The NBA draft just happened. Zion Williamson, huge name coming out right now. Obviously, you're a big R.J. Barrett guy. Moving forward with the Knicks, what do you think of this draft class, man? I'm telling you, we got some high flyers. We got some big names. Jay Morant right there. Yeah. Second pick of the it's, draft. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. We went through a phase where it was a lot of guys named Gesundheit. Guys we hadn't heard of. <laughs> yeah, guys right? from overseas, guys from around the world. And, yeah, there are a few international players, but there's a lot of big-time college programs. Michigan, fourth year in a row with a first-round draft pick. Didn't see any Buckeyes on the board. Oh, Four man, years in guy. a row, the University Rich of Michigan here, with first-round right draft now. picks. Oh. So, you know, that you see guys, uh, DeAndre Hunter from Virginia. You see um, Zion from Duke. You saw Cam Reddish from Duke. Yeah, there might be one and dones, but guys from big-time college programs are getting picked, and it's the accumulation of stuff. Right. The only reason the Lakers were able to get Anthony Davis, they had a lot of stuff. Yep. And oh. sometimes teams, they run out of stuff when they start paying guys. You saw the Warriors. They ran out of stuff when all their guys got injured. So the Hawks, the Cavs, the, the teams at the bottom of the barrel, they're accumulating dudes. They're accumulating assets. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like in football where the formula is you got to win now with a quarterback who's not getting paid. You got to win now when you have star players who aren't getting paid. Donovan Mitchell's on a sweet deal, a sweet deal. for the Utah Jazz. And they can be a playoff team every year. You see, like, like Aaron Judge, he's on a cheap deal you know right I mean? now for it's the like, Yankees. You know, even even New Orleans, they're going to have to decide: do you do you pay Brandon Ingram? Do you give him an extension when he comes up for it, like a Carl Anthony Towns or a Devin Booker? You know, in, right. in, the, in those situations. So, man, it's nerdy. It gets it gets fun when it's like the <laughs> forty six pick and the Knicks draft that Lithuanian He Man. <laughs> Iggy, that freshman Iggy looks like He Man, bro. Yeah, bro. He's out there flexing. But, bro, though, you know, a couple years ago, I think. Seven out of the 15 All-NBA guys were the 15th pick and higher. The year that Isaiah Thomas was All-NBA, yep. DeAndre Jordan, Giannis. So you can get value for guys deep in the draft. Right. Um, so, you know, pay attention that late at night when, you know, you're seeing guys you might not have heard of now, but a couple years from now they might be All-NBA. I'd like to get your take on this. And we, and we were talking about earlier, Brock, we were talking about, I think it was an hour one, how – you don't necessarily need to have three NBA superstars to win a championship. No, you have grown-ups. Right? You have mature grown-ups. Like, I remember I was I was homesick the other day, and I was watching NBA TV, and they were replaying a bunch of finals games, and I'm watching, like, Bison Daly versus, like, Ooh, Bison Antoine Daly. Carr. Nice. And it's just like, <laughs> like wow, what, what is dunk. this? This is like, right? Back. You know, it's like 97 yeah. low-post men's basketball <laughs> yeah. with the grown-ups. Yeah, the final Banging scores in the low. 80s. Yeah, it's like you, you can have all these cool young players. Trey Young's awesome. All these guys are uh, 
fantastic. And I remember playing in May and June. Yeah. You know who's playing? Danny Green, Kyle Lowry, Serge Ibaka, right? like grownups, you know? And so, yeah, that's what you see with these teams now. If you go all in on these three, four max guys, and then you have a bunch of Schmendrakes, you're left like cockroaches and the lights come on, scramble. <laughs> it's all over the so place. So you got to have a, a, some depth. The game's so fast now. Yeah. The shots are – so there's so many more shots that are getting put up. You got to be 8, 9, 10 deep now. Yeah. And the Warriors just weren't. It was a war of attrition, well, and, also and the too, Raptors won out. Yeah, of course, and, and, and the way the three-pointers changed the game. I mean, ever since, you know, Steph showed up. I feel like in high school, you were not allowed to shoot outside the lane. Yeah, right? It was like 10-foot jumpers <laughs> were right there, and that's it. Nah. Bro, you stay up in here. Let, let, let the sharpshooters go out there. But we didn't have any sharpshooters. You're like a Charles Oakley without the 18-footer. Oh, bro, I was like a Johnny Stockton. Like, give me the ball, and I'll pass it right back <laughs> so to you. You were a dirty player. <laughs> <laughs> I can play some defense. Guys, yeah. I can play some defense. you enjoy this style, uh, the evolution of the NBA now? Yeah, I do. I do love the flow of it. It reminds me when you're playing pickup with your friends and you're at, like, a full court that's not five-on-five five, but small enough for, like, right. Three on three or four on four full court for us civilians, <laughs> and everyone gets shots yeah. up. Yeah, I like it, and it's it brings the game back to skill. And the refs do swallow the whistle a little bit in May and June. It gets physical. The games weren't in the finals, 130 and 100. Yeah, like the regular season. You know, of course, but yeah. some of those you know, those Knicks '90s games, you look at the Ugly. score. I guess oh, the Rockets yeah. 74 68. You yeah, know? That's why it's so hard to compare players from one generation to the other, right? It was a way different game back when Jordan played. Like it literally, dudes were like. Clotheslining him, and now the I mean, guys yeah, were like they, flagrant twos all day. Yeah, but they, then Jordan was also not playing in a league that had a hundred dudes from around yeah, the that's world. True. That's true. And some of them were seven foot three and can shoot the three. Yeah, like exactly. it's just a bonkers league right now. So it, it, it's not full on Starship Troopers football. Like <laughs> it hasn't gotten that. <laughs> Next. That is a deep reference. You know what I'm talking about, <laughs> yes, though, I right? Do. In I act do. one, Casper Van Dien's a quarterback, I and they exactly. just like run it up. But it's getting there. Like it's getting video game like. Yeah, for sure. All right, once again, Nick Swisher sitting in for Rich Eisen on the Rich Eisen show, chatting a little NBA hoops with my guy Ben Lyons. Well, hoops doesn't stop, dude. It's summer, man. It's summertime and it's LA. Uh, so it's the Drew League. See LaMelo down say, at the Drew. What, what else is going down? Um, WNBA, I've been to a couple Sparks games this year. Candace yeah. Parker just came back. They got waxed the other night by the Mystics. <laughs> they lost by like 30. But LA has become, you know, I'm from New York. The Knicks are my thing. But, and New York will always be the Mecca and it's the city's game because we don't have fields and golf course. courses all over the city. But here in L.A., it's the capital of basketball right now. And the guys are working out here in the summertime. All the free agents are. You have all these 15, 16-year-old kids calling into sport, Sports Talk Radio being like, I saw David Fisdale leave cuts <laughs> in Beverly Hills. He was with Kawhi's trainers, girlfriends, <laughs> yeah. cousins, mom's Dog sister. Trainer. And Swisher was there, <laughs> so he's going to the Cavs. I only the went Ohio for the free connection. Yeah, Wait, exactly. Free you mentioned so, Lamelo. Let me ask you about him real quick. We've all been seeing the clips online on Instagram or whatever. If his name was not Lamelo Ball, what kind of prospect do you think he is? I almost feel like he is a child actor gone like off the rails in some way, right? Dunk, like, right? He, right. He's just, I mean, his basketball journey has been so yeah. all over the place. It's like, you look like a Lindsay Lohan. She's just every, she's <laughs> everywhere. Right. <laughs> so like, would she be the, like the, 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 the talent, the, the actress, if she weren't Lindsay, I don't know. I mean, LaMelo ball, like a, 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 a real prospect. I haven't, felt that from anyone. I haven't heard him commit to a big time program. We feel his currency in the culture because of the last name and because right. of the awkward shot and the crazy shots and the Instagram moments. But I, I tip my hat to him to go out there to the Drew League this summer and exp he's playing expose. Great. He's playing great. Yeah, he's playing great. And he's getting beat out and he's doing his thing and, and he's, you know, from Lithuania, from River, wait, we went from Chino Hills to Lithuania to Ohio. And now he's going to Australia. And now he's going to Australia, which is great. I was just in Australia in November and they are basketball crazy. Like and, and jerseys how everywhere, how, how, and he's 17, 18, right? Yeah. So I, I, I don't think he's a real prospect yet. Is Bull Bull a real prospect? I mean, he dropped to the 48 right. spot. Played or what? Like 10 that. games in Oregon. You know what yep. I mean? Yeah. So I think some guys can sell you on the hype for a, a, a little period. I, I'm rooting for Lamelo. I mean, I he think says he's he wants awesome. to be the number one pick in the draft. I, I enjoy watching. I think Lonzo's great. I just think. He's gotten unlucky with some injuries, but I think he's a good player. But he didn't subscribe to that in search of greatness theory. That kid was playing basketball his entire life. Yes. Why you see the injuries at a young age. Lonzo yeah. Ball should not be brittle. He should not be over trained and have these recurring ankle things and knee right. things. Like he, you know, he didn't someone tells me at 14 years old he wasn't playing baseball. 
Like he wasn't just yeah. out there being a kid. He was in yeah. the backyard training. He's in the NBA, so what do I know? But I think uh, I think Lamelo's got a real shot if he can figure out that jump shot. Wow, man. Bro, really a, a lot comes with the ball family, <laughs> just in general. Yeah. Man. Brock, yeah. What do you got on that movie right there? Okay, so it's the uh, anniversary of Spaceballs release in 1987. <laughs> one of the great film spoofs of all time. Of course, spoofing, the Schwartz. Spoofing the the Star Schwartz Wars. is strong with you. <laughs> and so Job I was, of the Huts. I was thinking about this early today. What's the best the movie? Huts spoof best movie spoof so of course you got space balls austin powers kind of does the spy uh -huh. game stuff hot shots take on you know flight <laughs> oh, action yeah, movies yeah. Uh, shout out to my buddy john budish who is a spoof expert he loves the genre <laughs> of spoof naked movies. gun is a fun he's one he's written a bunch um, uh, there's so many the scary movies all yeah. those types what's your favorite what's the best yeah, there's a lot of good ones the waynes brothers obviously dominating that that arena my dad's Quote is on the box, I think, of Naked Gun or Naked Gun <laughs> Two and a Half. Uh, it's not two 33. It's not on 33 and a third. It's on Two and a Half. Um, I was in high school. I was 18. My high school baseball team went to a nice New York City private school. We did spring training in Arizona. Oh, so, oh so we're, fancy, bro. It's royalty wow. over we're, here, We're bro. in Arizona. We are staying at a motel across the street from the, uh, the Arizona Mills Mall, and we went to a test screening of Scary Movie where they're just testing it randomly sure. in some shopping mall. So I'm 20 deep with my high school baseball team <laughs> to see Scary Movie. I, I, I don't think I've ever laughed so hard. That movie blew us away. It was so funny. They made three or four of them. I, that Because Scream was a spoof movie itself in some ways. Not full-on spoof, right. but it was satirical of the genre and made references to previous, you know, kind of scary sure. movie tropes. Like the yeah, right. So this was like super meta, right? In that it's like a spoof of a satirical film. So I'm going scary movie is the spoof movie. For nice, me. bro. Well, before we let you go, man, you've been absolutely awesome, bro. I'm so honored Dude, to have you. Chance to let it rip with Swish, bro, man. I, gotta I ask feel you like what? you're like a Matthew McConaughey <laughs> speech come to life. A Matthew well, McConaughey. I pre like, I'll you just let it. it rip, bro. I wish I looked like him, personally. That's just me. But I got to ask you about the partnership with the PGA you have coming up this yeah, summer. Yeah, I'm really excited. Starting in August, I'm going to be doing a series for PGAtour.com and for Scratch, um, where I'm going to be profiling different charity golf tournaments around the world and around the country. We're going to go to Jalen Rose's tournament. In Detroit, where he benefits the JRLA, his leadership academy. We're going to support Charles Woodson's foundation up in Napa. We're going to play for, with Charles. Um, going out to support Clay Thompson's foundation. Oh, is that um, a low stinger right low there? Low stinger, yeah. When, when, I, when I get it off the tee, they say it's like Mike Trout. You know? <laughs> so low stinger. But, uh, but yeah, man, I love the game of golf and the fact that these charity tournaments exist out there and we can bring fans who don't get the access to those events and shine a light on all these charities. Like Jalen Rose is running, running a school in Detroit for a long time, the Leadership Academy. I was on his, in his family on Family Feud to raise money for it, and now we're going to raise money for it through the golf thing. And um, anything that we can do to, on our platforms to raise awareness, raise money, just show that there's a world outside of ourselves, I think we got to do. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. This summer should be a lot of fun with oh, PGA bro. Tour. I mean, this is amazing. As much as you give back and, and as awesome as the uh, the platform you're on, you're using it to do unbelievable things, brother. Keep being you, my Thanks, man. Thanks, bro. I know word of the day, but it felt stoked appropriate. To, it felt good right there. Here. Thanks, bro. Stoked to see you over in London. <laughs> we'll go across the pond. We'll hang out. Man, I can't believe I get to say this to Nick Swisher on TV and radio. Like, see you in London, bro. See you in London, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. And gentlemen, so one ridiculous. More time. Your boy Switch filling in for Rich Eisen on the Rich Eisen Show. My boy Ben Lyons, brother. Thanks, man. Thank you so much for coming on, my friend. I appreciate you, baby. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.